My name is Dr. Gordon Miyamato, and uh, I'm the medical director for the Chosen Hospital and Fertility Center, Tetegu. I started the fertility program at the All Faith Medical Center um, wager here in 2018 and we were operating under the um, umbrella of All Faith Medical Center. So having to move into our own, we needed to rebrand and so the name Chosen Hospital um, was adopted and the reason for Chosen we believe is um, stem from the fact that we believe what we are doing is a calling, um, it's a duty which is divine from God. And uh, in scripture, he says he's called us and chosen us to be peculiar unto himself. So all of us here, even though it's non-denominational, we believe that what we are doing is just not um, a duty or it's just not a profession. It goes beyond a profession to uh, become what God has called each and every one to do. And since our inception, we've chalked so many successes. Um, we've done over um, close to a thousand IVF cycles. And uh, to the glory of God, our success is about 65 to 70 percent and we've had so many births and uh, we have clients from all over the country from the West African sub-region Nigeria, Togo, Benin, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire. We have clients from all over the place and then also from Ghanaians from Europe and the Americas. They come here to have their procedures. Um, now we have moved into a full hospital setting where we are not only going to do fertility and its related um, issues but we are also taking on men's health general opd surgical um, consultations clinical psychology we are also taking on um, pediatrics um, and then many other disciplines. So it's a full-fledged hospital with a lot of bed space and then state-of-the-art equipment. And then we have very qualified medical team to also render the services. So we've moved from only gynae and fertility related to a general hospital setting where all these disciplines are done at Chosen Hospital. Once you enter, um, you will be well received at the front desk. Even from the security, they will direct you where you to park and then they usher you to the front desk. We do a walk-in service as well as um, appointments and booking. So um, walk-in, you can come as, of, as and when you, are, you have an issue and by appointment too, you can book an appointment online and then you'll be given the time to see the specialist you want to see. You have an opportunity to sit at a comfortable waiting area. Um, our nurses are trained to receive you well and then they make a card for you. Most of our services are, I mean, computerized. So every information of you is kept um, in the software system and we have very good um, IT unit that makes sure that your information is safe and uh, safe from hacking and all that. And then we have an in-house laboratory which is well equipped for most of the laboratory investigations you would ever do in medicine. So that is also available for you. Then we have very good and comfortable accommodation for admissions. Some people even come here just to take off stress just to relax it's just like home so 
uh, we have these very I mean, brilliant services for everyone. IUA is just a component of the treatment that we do. We have other services that we render. Infertility is defined as the inability of a couple to conceive after having unprotected sexual intercourse. That is a man and a woman, I'm not saying the other gender. For one year, unprotected, consistently three to five times sexual intercourse in a week. So assuming that under 35 years of age, from 18 to 35, you've married, and for one year, you are trying three to five times every week for one year, and the pregnancy is not forthcoming, you need to get closer to a hospital. Of which you are one of them, you can approach us easily. If you're above 35 years, your age is already, you're in the age bracket already, because majority of our women are now hitting their menopause at age 40. So if you are above 35, you have only few, I mean, years to clock your menopause. In that context, don't wait for one good year. After six months, I mean, you move in and then you come. And you also investigate and see. Infertility is not the headache or the burden of the woman alone, no. With our findings, one third of the problem, or let's say 30%, is for the women who are having blocked tubes and then other conditions that after investigations you will be told. The men are also having one third of the issue or 30%, which is also a challenge for the male part. And then 30%, the man is having issues with the sperm or other conditions. The woman has issues with the tube blockage or other conditions. And then 10%, nature has not given it to us to explain. Everything will be found with the woman or everything will be found with the man, but still we are not finding the cause of the problem. So it's 30, 30, 30, 10. So in that context, unless you come around, that is when you will see exactly what is the problem of yours. So that your in-laws shouldn't sit in the house and be putting all the blame on the woman. Because if I don't put in the sperm, the woman cannot get pregnant on herself. And if I'm putting in and there's no forthcoming, we need to get closer and then do investigations and see where the challenge is coming from. So it's not for only the woman to look for fertility treatment, but it's a couple's, I mean, effort to get it done. So when you come to the chosen hospital and fertility center, as we were formerly all fit fertility center or fertility unit, we have migrated our fertility equipment here and we have even more added additions or added I mean services in the treatment. We now do the freezing of I men egg. If you have issues to do with surgeries or other stuff, you can freeze your eggs for as long as you can service it. At the same time, if you have leftovers, we can freeze for you. Male factor challenges, we have urology department who can also handle for you. We have all the services when it comes to assisted reproductive technology. IUI you are mentioning is one of them, which is artificial uh, insemination or assisted um, intrauterine insemination. That one, we only prepare the sperm and then put inside the woman with some few medications. But we have the IVF where we have to bring the eggs outside the human body, add the sperm to it in the lab, and then the two comes together in the incubator. You put in the best of two or three for conception to take place. And we have another part which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection where the sperm has the challenge or maybe an egg is having a very thick uh, outline or we call the zona pellucida. It means that the sperm is finding it difficult to enter, so no fertilization in the first attempt. That one, you have to inject the sperm into the egg to cause fertilization, and the rest of the development continues. At the same time, men with issues where the sperm cannot come out, you go deep into the testicles and then take the sperm out there and they use that one for the ICSI. So the services are numerous, but when they get closer, that is where you see exactly where you belong and then what is for you, and we give it to you. And what I wouldn't want us to sit back and say, oh, we have a child already, whatever it is. We are in the country where we know some are having kids that are not dears. So once you are not going to do DNA to specify where the child is coming from, every woman knows who the father of a child is, right? So you have to get closer and see whether that first one or second one is actually yours, but there has been a problem which has come into the pipeline and therefore we need to address. 
others to do I mean um, vasectomy for the male and then the women will do also another uh, sterilization or something because they were with one man they didn't want more kids so they have to tie their womb or something and afterwards they want another child so it's also a secondary infertility others to try they have a they had a challenge so their womb cannot take the pregnancy again due to some surgeries we can rent a womb for you what you call surrogacy so that a beautiful lady can carry your pregnancy for you when she delivers you give your baby to you and it's your bona fide property as a family or a couple but we are professionals and we do everything professional as part of our core values we believe that we form a family you are not a client to us you are a family if they say um, blood is thicker than water we also stand by you and we say we stand with you and your family and we make sure your health is our priority because of that um, we are very empathetic um, we take the clients through as though they were our own relatives or ourselves um, we are also quite disciplined we meet timelines as we should and then we are also very caring uh, the patients will testify the there's an exceptional interpersonal relationship between clients and um, the staff and then the place is also very clean and welcoming you feel like home at chosen hospital and above all our services the success from our services market and they make us stand out so when you put all these things together uh, chosen hospital is the most preferred for most of our clients and we are not allowed or we don't advertise but just by way of word of mouth from the patients uh, people prefer to come to us and we deliver whenever we I mean, decide to do a case for them. I know one quotation in the Bible that is Exodus 15:26, which says uh, uh, if we adhere to the commandments of the Lord, He is not going to visit us with the diseases that affected the, I mean, the Egyptians. Now, our world in which we live, a lot of things are happening. Therefore, we have some of these challenges coming in and out. Now, notwithstanding, fertility or infertility was first, I mean, record, recorded in the Bible. Abraham and uh, Sarah went through infertility. The promised son, which is Isaac, and Rebecca also went through the same infertility challenge. At the same time, we can recall other people in the Bible, Elizabeth the same, and then Hannah with Elkanah also the same. So when we are talking about infertility, it's not only on, uh, on our soil now, or in our days now that infertility is on the rise, only that our lifestyle and certain things are making it look more rampant and then needed attention than it used to be in the beginning. But infertility has been from inception of life and it's going to continue to eternity. Intrauterine insemination, it's one of the um, different methods you can do when you are doing the assisted reproductive technology. IUI um, is the method where you just pick the sperm from the man, wash them and inseminate it into the woman for the sperms to meet with the eggs and then um, fertilization and pregnancy occurs. Um, this was the first baby, I mean the twins. It resulted in twins when we started the process and uh, that is what we have captured. Beyond the IUI, we also do IVF. IVF uh, is an intra in vitro fertilization where we bring out the eggs and we bring out the sperm, put them together outside, they fertilize and then we incubate them <coughs> Excuse me for a few days and then we transfer them into the uterus. So that is a step above the intrauterine insemination. And then we also do intracytoplasmic sperm injection, that is ICSI, and um, that one is the highest form of the fertility treatment. So all these three uh, services are rendered by CHOSEN, and beyond that too, we do cryopreservation. In that case, 
um, people can store their sperm, their egg, their embryos for as long as they will. And whenever they are ready, they can have them transferred into them for fertilization. So um, if you are going through some treatment for which reason your eggs or sperm will be affected, we can harvest some of them, store them for you. After the procedure, uh, when you are okay, we can do the transfer and it will not affect the success of your fertility. Um, there are others too who may not have womb or for some reason um, they cannot carry babies. Once we get the eggs from them and the sperm from their partners, we can somebody else will carry the baby for you, which is surrogacy. And then they give birth and then these are given to you. So these are forms of treatment that we do here. Not only fertility, but any gynecological problems we handle. Um, when you get pregnant, we take care of you, antenatal care till you deliver. We do deliveries. And by deliveries, I mean the vaginal delivery or cesarean section, we do. We also render surgical services. So most of general surgery we do here. Um, we also do general med internal medicine. Any disease that you bring, we have the specialist to take care of you. Cardiology, we take care of heart and its related problems. We also have a pediatric wing where we take care of babies and children, all their diseases and sicknesses, and we have an intensive care for babies. So baby incubation, premature babies, um, babies that are sick, we take care of them. So we have a very wide array of services. We also have a clinical psychologist in-house. You know, what we are doing involves a lot of emotions, involves a lot of psychological stress and all that. We have a psychologist that would take care of you and make sure um, you are psychologically sound before you undertake any processes. We also have a, a family physician specialist and then they take you, I mean father, mother, everybody, member of the family, whatever problems you have, um, we have packages for you. And then there is also a special clinic for men which takes care of men's health and uh, that is something very special. We take care of their prostate, we take care of um, anything, especially stress-related disorders in men. We also have um, a specialist that takes care of them. So a very wide array of services. We have a philosophy of rendering quality but affordable service. And um, our charges is one of the lowest, I mean, in the industry. If you take our charges in Ghana, I don't think anybody beats us in terms of the cost, especially for the fertility related problems. And because of that, um, it gives us a lot of people coming in because you get the quality service at very competitive prices. I don't think you get it better anywhere than here. Whatever we are doing, the government alone cannot handle it. It's supposed to be a uniform activity. But unfortunately for the private sector, everything is a burden on us. It's the same populace we are trying to serve. But when goods and services are to be given to Ghanaians, when you go to the uh, government institutions, they are quite affordable because when they import things, they don't pay duties. They are not exempting anything for I mean, private hospitals. So everything that you import is supposed to pay like 100% or more on it, of which that I mean, tax component has to be shared on the services you render, making it much expensive compared to the I mean, public sector. So the challenge of importation duties that we don't have any exemption is making the private I mean, environment a bit difficult to operate, especially in this economy where the dollar is not stable and then everything we use in the private settings and that of the hospital settings are imported from abroad. Everything is expensive now. That is how I see it. Whatever we are doing, despite it being private, we are still rendering services to the public or the Ghanaians. So if the government can do some 
level of exemptions for private hospitals is going to ease the burden of cost. So we are able to also reduce the pricing of the services we render to the public because government alone cannot take care of the entirety of the nation. Private, a private man has to come in and if the cost is so high, people are in need of the services but they cannot afford. So the government is supposed to help one way or the other to reduce the tax components on the private way, uh, settings so that we are able to also help more numbers of Ghanaians. So we are saying that we are ready to serve the populace. So if the government can do something to help, especially with the importation duties of the goods and services that we use in our services, it will do us more good to reduce the cost implications on our patients or the cost burdens on the patronage or the people who comes into need of our services so that at least the ordinary Ghanaian and average Ghanaian who is still in need of such services can also have an advantage.